I want to show you these really cool light bulbs. Nipporal is the brand. They're USB. They're remote rechargeable bulbs. They're just regular uh, bulbs, light bulbs, and you can plug them into a, a lamp. Comes with instructions. I've got two in here because I have one over here and one over here. They're hanging. They come with a hook. And they come with, I don't know, they sent me two remotes. Maybe one would get lost or something, but it's a, it's a remote. It's pretty darn cool. Let me show you how it works. So, got the light bulb. Now, here is for USB. It's USB-C. There's a cap on here. And see, it's a regular light bulb. You screw it into your lamp. Okay, so... But that doesn't turn it on. No. I have to use the remote for this. So let me show you. On. There we go. Off. Okay. On. And this is blue light. See blue? Okay, it was already on blue. What is this one? This is just regular white. And this is soft white. Now it has a plus and a minus on there. Look at that. There's all kinds of um, things you can do with it. And I can make it go more. There we go. Plus, minus. Now this is 50% and this one's 100%. Whoa, yeah. We'll put it on 50. And I'll bring it down even more. Let's see, what does this say? Oh, and there's a timer for it. I can put it on for 15 minutes down below, 30 minutes, 60 minutes, and 120 minutes. Yeah. I really like it. So I can hang this up wherever I want to, or you can actually plug it in. And I, you know, here's something I was thinking. I'm not sure. If you plug this into a lamp, a regular uh, lamp, well, I, I'm wondering if that also charges it up. It might. I'm not sure. But I had to get this with the USB. I really had to. Let me turn this one off. Okay. Here's one of the other ones that I had. This is not USB at all. The only way this one, they sent me a box of these. And did they want me to review them, which I did. But then I realized they sent me this. They probably... They didn't know, and I didn't know enough to say, hey, I want USB, but this is what they sent me. This goes into um, a regular lamp, and that's how it gets charged up. I think there's still some juice left in this, but th this is the, the screw-on for this. There. Okay, the juice is out, but if I was to, um, if it... It was charged up. I could hit that little button there and this would turn it on and I could hang it up. I still have that lamp that I bought, that $9 lamp at Walmart. I've still got it. I'm going to keep it. And I wanted to keep one of these just for me. The other three I just gave to a friend because she has a house and it seems appropriate that um, somebody could actually use them. Put these to use. But I do want to keep one here just in case. I have to try that. I'm sure that it'll work in the lamp. So maybe I could get rid of that. But I really like these. What do you think? Very, very nice. Like I said, I mean, they actually sent me two remotes, which is pretty darn cool. So it's a nice brand. Let me take this off. It really makes for nice lighting in here for filming. I mean, I could even put another one here. Set it over here. You know, I could really just kind of place it around and see if I can kind of play play around with the lighting. Well, I have a couple letters I want to read to you because they're good. They're good questions. And it, it brings up the topic so that we all can learn. But first, 
I want to show this to you. It's, it's called Timbal. This, <laughs> I know, this is one of those um, safety alarms that you can hook to your belt or whatever, your fanny pack, your purse, whatever. And I, it has a, quite a high decimal sound. And then here's a light that flashes in case if it's at night. But <laughs> I've yet to pull this out now. <laughs> I was talking to my friend. I go, I want to try it, but I'm kind of scared. They say to pull the pin. I'm going to guess that this is the pin. I just pull this, this thing, and I push, pull it out. Yeah. Um, and then in order to deactivate it, you have to push it back in. It's going to be really loud. I'm not sure. Give me some suggestions where I try this out at that I don't freak the whole world out, okay? <laughs> because it's really loud. And I'm really glad I got this. I really am because at the senior center today, we were having, we we're all having a big discussion. And they were telling me, I don't watch the news too much. I should probably watch Tucson News. But the news is, is that people are getting attacked in Tucson. One lady just yesterday was attacked in her backyard. And I don't, I don't care what anybody has to say about this, but I said, well, who was it? And then she, they said he, they did catch him. He was from Venezuela, okay? Just the last week or so, every day I'm seeing in the, in the scrolling that Ven, what Venezuela did was they emptied out their prisons and they shipped him to the border to come across because people are coming across. Now I know I'm gonna get pushback from this, but I'm just gonna tell it like it is because that's who I am. But, you know, I was kind of worried when I heard that. And here to find out that there's been attacks going on. I'm not saying every Venezuelan's doing it. But the guy who, who jumped the fence and got into somebody's yard and attacked a woman right in her yard was from Venezuela. Okay. Another girl has, she's a 14-year-old. She's been, she's missing out of her bedroom. Her phone was there. They said it's very suspicious looking. She was kidnapped right out of her, out of her house. And they said that other things are going on. So we all are going to have to be careful. I'm glad I got this and I'm keeping this close by. I only hope it works. I need to try it out to make sure. But yeah, I need to um, keep this close by. Yeah. This comment is from White Bird Must Fly Too. Okay. Let me turn it this way. She says, <clears throat> Jackery recommends not getting my solar panels wet. I'm going to imagine that it's just, it's a portable solar panel that they can set outside. And she says to keep duff, dust off, etc. on my instructions. I couldn't even use them in Oregon due to heat from the sun, builds up in my van, causes ice chests to heat up as well as me. It rained and was overcast too much of the early or late sun in the coast near the Columbia River, Portland area. I didn't pull the two inline units out ever to charge my 100 watt Explorer. Okay, the two, it was a two inline units. They're, they're two solar panels that um, can be joined together. Then she says, Arizona was so dusty, but they did charge well as I pulled them out and set the power generator, I mean the power station, in the shade under a tree near the panels on the ground. Okay, white bird must fly. Yeah, um, if it, to me, if it says that they can't get wet, that's an issue. But I also have a Jackery. I bought myself a 300 plus, which is a LifePo 4 battery in it, lithium battery in it, but it's a LifePo 4, which is much better than just lithium ion. And I did get the solar panel that goes with it. And mine probably says the same thing too. As far as dust, I mean, just wipe off the dust. Just wipe it off. I mean, you do have to wipe them off every once in a while. I think they're just... They're probably trying to keep themselves from um, people returning them defective or something like that. So they're just trying to cover themselves. But there's not much you can do about dust. Of course, they're going to get dusty, right? As far as getting wet, I'm not sure. I don't think they are waterproof. But if, I mean, I think if you're talking about a downpour, 
you need to pull it in for sure. I mean, why would you want to leave it out there anyways? But if you got yourself like a Renegy, whether it be in a metal case where they're not bendable or you got the flexible, which I have on my roof, those are waterproof, completely waterproof. So yeah, I mean, if it's going to downpour, but if it's sprinkling or whatever, just don't freak out. Just go get it and bring it in because you're probably not going to get much sun anyways if it's raining, right? So there you go. Well, thank you for that information. White bird must fly. Okay. This is from Carolyn Andrews. Wow. I finally found the proper place to make a comment. Yeah. Just... There's that alarm again. It never fails. I'm supposed to drink water. That's my alarm to drink water because I will forget all day. Hold on. I should drink more, but I want to do this. You don't want to just watch me drink water, do you? Do you? Okay. So, yeah. I have a question. I know you prefer the Jackery Power Station. I have been seeing one called BOGO. Do you have an opinion on this power station? No, I do not. I've never heard of that. But some of them, there's so many new ones coming out that I've never heard of. But let me tell you something that Will Prowse said. I mentioned him yesterday in a video. Will Prowse is basically like one of the solar experts. He's so cool. He used to be a nomad. He used to travel. He used to have a van. He's had all different kinds of vans. And he was the one that I watched him when he was in California tape up with with um, black Gorilla Tape a flexible, flat, flexible solar panel on the top of his van. I thought I can do that. And that's why I did mine. It's because of him. I thought it was genius. And it was like so easy. Something I could do. It's not like I had to drill anything. Well... He, he now has a house and he has a dedicated garage where he does experiments. And one thing he does is he takes apart all of these um, power stations, these power banks. He takes them apart. I don't call them power generators because they don't generate anything. They give us something, but they don't generate it. We have to put something in it. The sun is the generator. And he takes them apart and, and, and pulls them up, pulls, pulls them up. And he films it and he talks about it. And he said that almost all of the power stations are basically the same thing. One of them might put the battery over here, the, the lithium ion. One of them might put it over here. One of them, he said they just sort of stack it up different on the inside. But now we have differences of LifePo4 and lithium ion. I'm only going to go LifePo4. If you haven't seen um if you don't know what i'm talking about when i say life before um go to yesterday's watch yesterday's video because i really give a specific um this description of why life before the difference and why it's superior in many ways it's superior even for the environment and but he said they're basically the same i mean it's got the same components in it they just move them around for for me, I do like Jackery. I just do. They are a little bit more expensive, but I, my Jackeries have been going, going. They're like the ever er, er, Energizer bunnies. Yeah, they just keep going even after all the 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 uh, cycles they've been through. You know, of powering up, powering down, powering up, powering down. So, but the Bogo, I've not heard of it. Here's what I suggest that you do. If it's on Amazon, well, look it up on Amazon. Even if you don't order from Amazon, look it up on Amazon. And then if there's a BOGO on there, go on the reviews. A lot of times, I don't care where. I might go to Walmart and buy something or Target, whatever. But I go on Amazon first and see if it's there so I can read the reviews. Because I'm not going to get any of the re good reviews on Walmart app or anything like that. So that's what I suggest. This is from Kathy Bell. Where do you do your cooking? Outside or inside? Oh, uh, well, I don't really cook. Um, I think you're probably a new and welcome if you're new here. I think you probably haven't watched a lot of my um, episodes, but I don't really cook. 
oh, I might fry an egg here and there. Um, make a tostada, something like that. But um, as a rule, I don't like to cook in here and I don't like to carry it. If I can, here's what I do if I go outside and do it at a picnic table. I gotta get my stove out. Then I gotta get my tray out. Then I have to put everything in it that I think I'm gonna use and take it out. Because usually if I'm in the city, which I am most of the time, I don't have my sliding door open. I can't just hop in here. I get so tired of taking it out, cooking, and then having to bring it all back in. I mean, seriously, I might as well just cook right here and then I can cook if I wanna go eat the picnic table, then I can carry it to the picnic table. There you go. Um, do I have a camp table? No. I do have a little table, though, in my um, storage. Now, if I'm out camping, I actually like to pay for a campsite, and there's a picnic table there, so I don't need a table. I rarely boondock. And do I have an outside chair? Oh, absolutely. I've got two of them. Um, but I don't carry it with me because I don't really pull it out. I don't really need it. And it's in my storage. And what is it? What is it that you store in the bin up front? Oh, um, food, um, extra cans of food, not much. Um, some butane and my pot and my um, uh, skillet and just some odds. And then right now there's a bag of um, great food in there because I only can hold so much in here. This is starting, I'm putting too much in it. This netting is starting to kind of tear. So yeah, that's just odds and ends stuff. Thank you for taking the time to show your setup. She likes my colors. Okay, there we go. Now this one I do want to mention. <laughs> this is from Sylvia Costello. Costello. Hi Lee, maybe you have talked about this before. Do you recycle? Well, I don't know what I need to recycle. I thought about this and I thought, I don't have that much garbage. I mean, what would I recycle? I mean, this box I'm gonna keep, these bulbs in it. I can't really recycle um, grapefruit peelings. Um, I open a can of chicken. Um, and I don't know where the, re I don't have a recycle bin. So I'm not, I'm not, um, I, I just, I think my lifestyle is very minimal. My lifestyle is very sustainable, more sustainable than I know anybody who lives in a house. And I don't care how minimal you are in a house. I don't flush the toilet. I don't waste two gallons of, ga gallons of water every time I flush it. And I know some of you say, oh, you know, well, I don't flush it every time when I urinate. Well, I bet at least the second or third time you do, I bet it gets flushed a, a few times. I really only use a gallon of water. And I will mention, as far as recycling goes, I bought these so that I could refill them. Talk about recycling. Oh my gosh, I recycled this. I've had these and I keep using them because they're so solid, that's why I bought these. My garbage consists of like um, peelings from my fruit and vegetables because I eat so much produce. Um, what's in my garbage, let's see. Paper towels. Somebody told me that was a waste. I was being wasteful by using paper towels. Really? Yeah, she said you should you paper towels are too expensive and they're just wasteful for the for the for the planet. And you should get a five gallon jug of water and use that and a rag to wash your stuff. Do you realize what that would entail? I would have to be washing my dishes. Where am I gonna put a five gallon thing anyways? But where would I put the dirty rags that I washed out like coffee cups? And when I, when I do make a sandwich or I make, you know, put chicken together with a little bit of um, uh, ranch dressing, stuff like that. I've got a dirty rag. Where am I, what am I supposed to do with that? And if I put it in a baggie, it's going to smell. No, 
I am not going to apologize for using paper towels. I refuse. No, no, no. <laughs> I, know, I know that you nomads are rolling your eyes too going, what? We are so sustainable in this lifestyle that the whole world should say, hey, let's all live in our cars and be minimal like that. Because we literally are, we're doing our job. We're doing everything that we can. As far as, as recycling, some of you might not agree, but I'm just going to lay it out there because that's who I am. I've read stories about recycling. <laughs> yeah. Most of the plastic bottles that are out there in the ocean are coming from Asia. And here's one of the reasons why. For some reason, instead of recycling those, those uh, water bottles that everybody keeps buying, the little water bottles, which I don't buy, they're shipping them to, um, to Asia, you know, Oriental nations over there. They're shipping them over there. What are they doing with them? Uh, maybe they're just dumping in the ocean. I don't know. But uh, they say that most of the, 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 that is those bottles that are ending up plastic that's ending up in the ocean is from Asia and it's floating. So oh, I think a lot of people are feeling so good about recycling and they're not really recycling it. I mean, they probably are recycling some of it. I think I'll end here <laughs> before I get on my soapbox, but no. I think as far as recycling goes for me, I don't think I need to. I think my whole lifestyle is a recycle, right? Okay, there you go. Okay, I love you guys. Thanks for watching. Thank you for watching it all the way through. Please subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. Yes, and if you want to give me a gift or buy, buy some of my products, I've got glasses, sunglasses. I've got neck gaiters. And I've got some jewelry also there. I've got exercise videos and I've got gifts. If you want to give me a very small gift, any size, thank you. Go to minivanlee.com. I've got the book, How to Live in a Minivan, the Minivan Lee Way. And it tells you exactly um, from A to Z how to do it all. It's all there. It's the best nomad book out there. And I mean that. It really is. So. <laughs> okay, I guess that's it. Bye. I love you guys. Bye.